the real truth about health. Flipping soul, mate. We all know that anyone claims to have the real truth is about as lit as you can get. I mean, don't forget the highly respected scientific journal, The Real Truth About Dems Facts and Also Crystals or Some Shit, magazine that only the smartest of smarts read. And then there's the sponsored by Hippocrates Institute bit. You know, Hippocrates of the Hippocratic Oath fame. The oath that all doctors totally take and isn't more ancient garbage to be ignored and doesn't contain things like swearing allegiance to various pagan gods and not using a frigging knife. So your surgeon isn't a real doctor unless he uses lasers. And yes, I know, there are reformed versions of the oath and none of them are really the Hippocratic Oath anymore, are they? And what's the point since, you know, laws exist, including international ones? So yeah, god damn, this is just the title card and I'm already nettled to the nth degree. Welcome to 2019, folks. The stupid train ain't slowing down anytime soon. Wait, Del Big Tree? I've heard that before. Isn't that. Oh, it is. Well, fuck. What happens to parents who claim their child was affected by the MMR vaccine? Well, obviously, they are dragged out into the streets and shot by the constabulary usurping naughty transgressive stupids. And we bunch of cu- Wait, we called ourselves what? God damn it, where's marketing? No wonder they think they're right when they are fighting a bunch of... those. <sighs> Need a new name, god damn it. What's the next bit? Are they listened to? How many mothers and fathers have made this claim? Well, that's irrelevant, isn't it? How many of them are qualified to make that diagnosis? How many of them have actually autistic children and just say they do, considering the fear boner many have for real doctors and instead opt to go to homeopaths and other assorted nonsense peddlers for their medical opinions? How do we know? that it is related to vaccines and not something else. You don't, unless you have done studies that prove your claims and have been through the rigours of peer review. Now let's have a look at all the anti-vax research that backs up, say, the claim of autism, since that is the primary contention. Funny that. So the <clears throat> so Vax really explored, you know, the parents' story, which was, I'm not a doctor, but here's what I think with nothing to back it up. I'm not going to watch the film anytime soon, but I'm betting it's that. And in before whining, Ew, you aren't going to watch the film. <laughs> yeah, fight me. My child got the MMR vaccine and then soon after lost the ability to walk, lost the ability to talk regressed or descended into autism. Let's sigh. Also, what's that sneaky little MacGuffin down there? Ah, it's everyone's favourite get-out-of-jail-free card. Personally, I think the only acceptable way to do this is big flashing letters at the top of the screen stating, I'm not a doctor, I have no idea what I'm talking about, and what have you. This story has been told by, you know, I don't know if it's ever been actually technically recorded. Extra convincing! I know I've met thousands of parents telling this story after making Vaxxed. Um, we travel the country in a bus uh, and continued doing, you know, interviews every time we went to. And I would stand in theaters that were, you know, full, 250, you know, people packed to the walls and say, Thanks for buying the tickets, suckers! At the end of the film, how many people here have a vaccine injured child and three quarters of the room would stand up? That is a brilliant point. I mean, who would have thought that people who buy into the notion of vaccine causing autism would also turn up and watch a movie about it? That's just amazing and must represent the exact makeup of the country. Great job, Dr. Damas. Can't wait to see your next study. I, nothing prepared me for this ocean of parents that believe that their child's injuries were caused by vaccines. I had, we had interviewed like six or seven for the film. Yeah, thanks a lot, Internet. You've managed to make a niche bad idea into a popular bad idea that has brought back poor, 
innocent, deadly diseases from the brink of extinction. I'm sure you'll go down in history as the greatest morons ever. But it never ended. Everywhere I go, I get stopped in airports. This thing is a, it's a serious, serious problem. And yes, the anti-vaxxer movement as a whole is a huge problem. But unfortunately, short of forcing people to be vaccinated, the only way of keeping the numbers up and the ignorance down is to point out the stupidity everywhere we can. I'm doing my part. Go out and make fun of some anti-vaxxers today. You know, the parents are just discounted. They're written off. These not doctors are written off when they make medical claims? Why, that's outrageous! Almost as outrageous as NASA telling me to bugger off when I told them how the space program could save millions if they just used bottle rockets. But apparently, I'm ignorant and don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I did the research, buddy. I was on the internet for two hours studying this crap. I think I know a thing or two about rocket science. Thank you very much. There was, there was one major case, which we sort of cover in Vax, which was, the, they called the omnibus proceeding. Essentially, there was 5,000 cases of parents in vaccine court. Vaccine court is this pseudo court set up by the Vaccine Injury Compensation Act. There's no judge, no jury. You know, it's, it's essentially rigged against you in many ways. I love that. His interpretation of no judge and juries is that it's rigged against him. My interpretation is no judge or jury would be rigged against the defendant because I'm pretty damn sure that if it doesn't have the same processes as a proper court, it isn't going to have the same proof standards as a court. And do bear in mind that even if it did go to a proper court and you convinced a judge or jury to award you the case... That still doesn't mean you're actually right. Courts don't decide the scientific consensus. The overwhelming preponderance of evidence does. So it's all moot anyway. But let's just stick to the point that they had 5,000 families all claiming my child's autism was caused by vaccines. And there's an island full of people who believe Prince Philip, that is, the Queen of England's husband, they believe that Prince Mother Flippin' Philip is a literal godman. Does it make them right because multiple people believe it? No, of course not. That would be stupid. Instead of letting those people each have their day in court, which and the idea being to pay them to take care of their children because it's very, very expensive, the, uh, the Department of Justice decided to take, I think it was three cases, that would represent the 5,000 and how those cases settled out they would decide whether or not the other 5,000 cases deserve to be handled. And Okay, I'm no Laura Riser, but I assume this is like the precedent system employed by courts, which I assume is to make it easier to figure out what should or shouldn't be done in similar cases, probably saving a lot of time and money on all sides. Is that the right thing to do? I don't know. Again, I'm not a Laura Riser, but... I'm sure it's not a tactic to screw you all over. In fact, most courts are in the business of upholding the law to the best of their abilities. And while not always perfect, there are damn sure a lot worse ways they could be doing this. In the end, those, what's interesting is one of the cases was Hannah Poling, whose father was a neuroscientist, uh, super brilliant guy. They actually settled out of court. They, all, they were on CNN, Sanjay Gupta, the father saying my child's autism was started by the uh, vaccines. Okay, so one, no single man, no matter how brilliant, is the ultimate authority on any scientific matter. So regardless of what he says, doesn't make it a fact. This is like when certain folks say XYZ well-known scientist said this. So what? What does the science say? That's all that matters. People are essentially irrelevant. And two, being settled out of court means absolutely nothing. That's individuals coming to their own conclusions and doing whatever it is they decide to do based on what they think, not necessarily the actual, actual facts. You could have a settlement about gravity not actually being a thing doesn't suddenly make us all slip the surly bonds and shoot off into space, does it? Wait a minute, I was wrong. Damn you, legal system! And instead of settling and just, as, and they were one of the omnibus cases, as I understand it, I'm pretty sure they were, 
they pulled them out of the omnibus group and said, we're going to settle that out of court. No one ever knows what they got paid or what happened there. And then they stuck with the last remaining ones. Yeah, you don't know. But you're sure going to make it sound like you do, aren't you? And said their, va- their autism wasn't caused by vaccines, therefore vaccines don't cause autism. We're not paying the other 5000 So that was sort of the end of the story for any parent that wanted to sort of have autism taken care of by the, by the, the state. I don't really know much about American healthcare, the ins and outs, etc. But I do find the idea that they wouldn't help individuals with debilitating conditions that are completely out of their control a little bit baffling. I mean, I know certain states do have aid for these folks, but a lot of people seem to hate socialised medicine. Yeah, I know. Sir Six, a filthy socialist. He thinks that modern society should care for its weakest members. Yeah, sure thing, pal. And your mum's a hoe. Blow me. Kiss, kiss. And um, in the end, I say I put it this way that we hear over and over again that we've extensively looked at, you know, vaccines and autism and there's no connection. Yep, but what's really fun is to just ignore that and go with your feelings and uneducated hunches. That's the real science. Checkmate, vax tards. I can tell you because I think I'm one of the few people that's ever spent, you know, as a journalist, I've spent three years investigating vaccines and vaccine safety and really nothing else. That has been my focus one guy, three whole years, as opposed to the pathetic thousands of scientists and hundreds of years. <laughs> We're also to assume that you're actually competent at journalism or reading or basic fact comprehension. <sighs> Again, you're one person and your opinion on vaccines is irrelevant next to the consensus, especially considering you aren't an authority on the subject. And I'm just going to throw this out as a guess but I'll wager you have zero relevant qualifications. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Every day I wake up, I'm passionate about it, and it is a complete and total lie that this has been extensively looked at. No, no, no. That is the lie. The idea there are hardly any studies is always being trotted out and is gibberish. Vaccines are one of the most heavily studied medicines on the planet, with countless man-hours poured into their research, development, and extremely rigorous testing before being brought to market. And that's without the studies on vaccines by third-party organisations keeping an eye on their safety, etc., after they come out on the general market. You, sir, are a liar or an idiot. I'm thinking probably both. Uh, the truth is, is there's 16 vaccines in the childhood schedule. They have only ever done actual studies looking at does a vaccine cause autism with the MMR vaccine. Well, that sounds like horseshit, mate. Considering the last blatant faltered and the fact that you share nothing to back that claim up and I can't find anything anything anywhere else that makes that claim, I'm thinking you're more than likely talking out of your ass. The fact is, the scientific consensus is vaccines do not cause autism, and even the worst actual side effect, which would be an allergic reaction, is completely reversible with prompt medical care. Every single claimed vaccine injury thus far has not been proven to be caused by a vaccine in any peer-reviewed scholarly papers. In fact, unanimously, the results are pretty clear that human error notwithstanding, vaccines are safe as long as they are properly administered, stored and given to patients who aren't otherwise ill. And until proven otherwise, that's the important point. You have to prove they do, not make stuff up, and tell sad stories from terrified and confused, misinformed parents. (sighs) Happy 2019, everyone. Signing off from the newly renamed National Association of Zany Individual Smart Guys. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Never mind.